Hello, and welcome to this series on shellcode obfuscation. I'm Mike Saunders, Principal Consultant here at Red Siege. And in this series, we're going to take a look at shellcode obfuscation techniques. We're going to look at different techniques that we can use to obfuscate shellcode to avoid detection. In the series, we're going to take a look at things like uh, simple substitution ciphers, more advanced encryption, as well as some novel techniques that you may not have seen before. We also have example code that will be available on our GitHub site that you can download, and that will have the programs that we're looking at in this series. And you can download them and test them out and change them up for your own needs. So let's take a look at some shellcode, a simple program, and why we need to do obfuscation. So what we have here is a simple program that contains some shellcode. The shellcode is a 64-bit Windows Meterpreter reverse HTTP payload. The shellcode has not been obfuscated in any way. And it starts out with the bytes 0xfc, 4883e4, and so on. That is pretty standard bytes for 64-bit shellcode. If you've ever done any work with 64-bit shellcode, you probably recognize that byte sequence. And this shellcode has not been obfuscated in any way. You can see our program contains a variable that stores our shellcode, has a main method, and it prints out a message. And that's all it does. It doesn't even use the shellcode. It just stores it. So let's run that program. As we expected, it prints out the message, and that's it. So does it get detected? I suspect it will because we haven't obfuscated that shellcode, but we're going to test that theory. We're going to use threat check. Threat check is a program that takes a file and submits that file to Windows Defender looking to see if it gets detected. And the way it does that is it splits the file into two chunks and submits both halves to Defender. If one of those halves has a detection, it takes that half, it splits it into two chunks again, and it analyzes those two chunks. And it continues to do that until it finds the exact bytes where the detection is occurring. So we're going to run it, and it didn't return immediately, so we know that it has found bad bytes. And indeed, it did. It says, identified end of bad bytes at offset 1F251. Over here on the right is a bunch of gibberish, so I suspect this is our shellcode. And here in this column is the actual shellcode values. And remember, it says identified end of bad bytes. So this means the end of the bad bytes is A256FFD5. So let's take a look at our shellcode. Now, if we go down to the end of our shellcode, we see that it ends with A256FFD5, which is exactly what Threat Check told us about here. So this is indeed being detected. Our unobfuscated shellcode has not been obfuscated in any way. And as we expected, it got de detected by Windows Defender. So that's why we need to use obfuscation techniques to protect our shellcode. So throughout this series, we're going to take a look at a bunch of different techniques to do that ways that we can use encryption and various encoding techniques to hide our shellcode inside our shellcode loader. As I mentioned before, there is a GitHub repository where you can download the source code for each of the example programs. You can analyze it, put in your own shellcode, and obfuscate it using the programs that we've given you and see the results. I hope you enjoy this series. We'll be releasing them on a regular basis. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm Hardwater Hacker. You can reach out to Red Siege, or you can hop in our Discord and feel free to come in and ask a question at any time. Once again, I'm Mike Saunders, Principal Consultant here at Red Siege. I hope you enjoy this series.